This is a response video about um, the Detroit church shooting that Mr. Griffin spoke about on Tuesday, October 20th. And I just received it. Maybe he did it earlier, but I just received it. To, actually just saw it today, not received it. But anyway, this is just a response video to that. For anybody that do not like Mr. Griffin, that is your prerogative. That is how you feel personally, but this is not a personal attack towards him. I have mad respect for him. I have mad love for him, and I and I do respect his opinion. But as his opinion, you know, that, that's his own. But for my personal opinion, I have to respectfully disagree. Now, in the video, you, you believed that it should have been the pastor that should have been shot and not the victim. Honestly, I have to disagree with that. I don't think anyone should have been shot. The entire party, both sides were handled, well, were not handled well. The pastor didn't handle it well, neither did the victim. Now, were there any innocent parties in this? No. Can I say the pastor was innocent? No, he wasn't because number one, he was sleeping with his wife, his, the victim's wife, as well as he shot the victim, which is not something he should have done. As for the victim himself, did he handle it well? No, he attacked him with a brick. Can I say his wife, the victim's wife, handled it well? No, because she was sleeping with the pastor as well as being pregnant with his child at the time. Unfortunately, she did suffer a miscarriage from watching your second video. And my condolences go out to her. And my prayers go out to her and her family in this, in this really sad time. Because I know it has to be difficult for a woman to lose a child. But I digress. And I actually say that the preacher's wife is innocent in this. There's no facts stating that she is or she isn't. So it's difficult to have an opinion for not knowing those things. But will I say that this entire but will I say this entire situation was handled well? No, it was not. All parties were guilty. And yes, I I can't say I can't say all of them because I don't know much about the preacher's wife. I don't know if she was aware of it. I don't know if she wasn't aware and I can't have an opinion on that. But as for the preacher, the victim and the victim's wife, no, nothing was handled well. It is a shame that it ended fatally and it shouldn't have ended fatally. And it's, I mean, but it's really sad that it did. But as for your further opinion about things like this, situations like this, especially when the pastor's involved, makes it difficult for some people, especially some young black people, to go to church. And I know you made a comparison between black and white. There's no black and white in this. The fact of the matter is, is that yes, he, whether he's appointed, I mean, whether he was anointed or whether he wasn't, I don't know. Or the fact that he did not handle himself appropriately, that is something that he is going to be that, that he is going to be responsible for in the very end. No one else but him. But despite all that, for those that actually do look at the man and not the message the man is preaching, in other words, for those that look towards the look to the to pastor himself and not look to the message that the pastor is preaching, which is supposed to be about the love of Christ, the love of the Lord, what he has done for us then that is a fatal flaw because you can be misled that way. But it'll be to the point where a lot of people start using it as an excuse and not allow themselves to get to know the Lord. But th this is just my opinion. And I feel that people are using that as an excuse, but that is my personal opinion. But for those that want to know the message, they will learn the message. They will find the message if they want to know. But if they look towards a man and look towards any other preacher out there that doesn't, that, that, that is flawed and makes mistakes and not listen to the message that he is preaching. That can encourage a lot of people not to go to church, but that should not stop them for one to know if they want to know. We are individuals. We are, we make mistakes. We are flawed, carnal people. We are not perfect. God knows we're not, and he still loves us regardless. But when it comes to that pastor, yes, he did not handle himself accordingly. Should he have died? No. But it's a shame that the victim did. But like I said before, for those that look towards the man and not the message, yes, they some of them will be will feel like they need to be take that it's not necessary for them to even learn. Because why should why should I learn? Because he's not perfect. Yeah, he's not. But it shouldn't be the man we should be looking at. It's the message. But I'm not going to use that as an excuse for Christianity because I don't believe Christianity in that way. And we spoke about this privately and I'm not going to get into it. But as for the pastor dying, he shouldn't have. As for the victim of dying, uh, should a victim have died? No, he shouldn't have either. Did any? And I guess here's my question for you. Do you really think that anybody won 
in this? Do you think there was anybody victorious in this? No, there was no one. And I answered it for you. There's no one that won in this. And it's a shame that it had the outcome that it had. But honestly, all parties were wrong in the situation. But we should not use that situation as an excuse to not know the Lord. 